Hi everyone, my name is Georgia and I work for a study in Sweden at the Swedish Institute. I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar. Today we're going to be talking about game design and what it's like to study game design related programs in Sweden. We've been doing a few of these webinars over the past week and a half, uh, talking about what it's like to study different subject areas here in Sweden. Uh, and we're going to continue these webinars in the coming weeks as well. So make sure you keep an eye out for the different dates and themes. Um, it's possible for you who are watching to submit uh, questions to myself and our students as we're talking through today's subject. I'd just like to state, though, that if it's a question related to your application or your eligibility, that's not something that we're going to be able to answer live today. Uh, however, if you have a question for one of our two students uh, about their experiences and how they feel studying here, then ask away. Okay, let's meet our two students. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> okay, um, let's start by introducing yourselves. Uh, what's your name? Where do you come from? And what are you studying? Ivan, you can start. Hey. Uh, my name is, of course, Ivan. I'm from Russia and Southern Sweden in Uppsala University on the Faculty of Game Design and Programming in particular. Mm -hmm. And Nahid? Hello. My name is Nahid. I'm from Iran. I'm 41 years old and I'm a mother. And uh, I'm coming from software engineering background. I'm currently studying for a Master of Game Development uh, at the University of Hovde. And Hovde, for those who don't have any idea about the city, is a small, beautiful city located between Stockholm and Gothenburg. Yes. Okay, well, it's nice to meet you both. Thank you very, very much for joining us today. Um, so my first question is, what made you consider studying in Sweden in the first place, Nahid? Well, as I said before, I'm a mother. And <laughs> uh, on one hand, I wanted to continue my study in game development field. And on the other hand, I have my family and I couldn't le leave them in my country to continue my dream. Uh, Sweden provides this opportunity to students to bring their family with them uh, to the uh, country and it's the first reason why I chose Sweden um, and it's the main one. Second, uh, I've always had the dream to become a game developer. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I started searching for possible opportunity for myself and uh, it took around six months and uh, also your your website helped me a lot to find information about okay. mm -hmm. studying Sweden. Okay. Um, what about you, Ivan? What made you apply to this program and uh, consider studying in Sweden? Uh, for me, there were, I think, two main reasons. Uh, no, actually three. The first thing is that uh, I didn't have to learn a new language in order to be mm -hmm. able to apply for the study. Uh, because basically everybody speaks uh, English, everybody speaks English in Sweden. Uh, the second thing is that I really wanted to go for the game development if we were actually going to commit and pay a lot of money for studying abroad anyway. So in that case, it would be reasonable to go for the program that I actually want to study for instead of mm -hmm. something else. Uh, and the third reason, not only that basically the game development uh, faculties could be found by me on the base uh, in this country and um, in England as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the third thing is that basically in Europe, uh, Sweden is the most dominant uh, country for, for the industry within yeah. the Europe. Other than that is basically only uh, Japan and uh, USA, which are out, were out of question, of course. Okay, well, that's great to hear. Um, and what have your impressions been so far? Can you tell me a little bit about your programs and how long you've been studying for, Nahid? Uh, actually, I'm in second year now. Mm -hmm. uh, the university is, have, there is not a very big university, but it's really growing fast and we have tight connection to uh, industry. 
Mm -hmm. uh, in our program, uh, we have a chance to work with real projects and uh, real clients and mm -hmm. uh, analyze their needs, their, uh, I don't know, their, mm, you can analyze everything, you can experience many things in that project and uh, have a real uh, experience and first-hand experience in a real project. Uh, also, I think uh, another important thing is that uh, our university has a really unique vibe for, and they try to gather uh, students from different backgrounds. Uh, you know, uh, game industry is really challenging industry, and it really is really different from other industries. People mm -hmm. from different backgrounds should uh, work together and produce. A, a product which is called a game and mm -hmm. uh, people from 3d art programming uh, 3d art background uh, 2d art background programming background and uh, then uh, there are a lot of uh, conflicts may arise uh, in that um, sense mm -hmm. uh, but our university somehow managed to simulate that vibe for us and we mm -hmm. can have uh, experience uh, and knowledge about other uh principles and uh, other um people point of view somehow so you can mm -hmm. learn a lot and it's the most valuable thing i think mm -hmm. in our program and it's okay. the best thing i can for now no that's very good to know and what's your program like so far ivan how long have you been studying for here um i started my third year third and final year in bachelor studies okay. uh, and I guess talking about, talking about my experience in studying in general I don't think it will be specific to Sweden it will be rather specific to Europe in general uh, mm -hmm. but coming from my personal experience uh, the way uh, the way of the curricular to study it's in and taught in Sweden is both a blessing and a curse for me uh, as for students coming from Russia. The thing is that um, I would say it's just first of all the, the very good thing that absolutely good thing is that uh, there is no extra stuff. Um, basically the only things that are taught to you in the universities are the only ones that will be relevant to your specialty mm -hmm. uh, and while it may sound like a absolutely like normal and adequate thing um, in, in the first two years of universities in Russia basically all universities have the shared uh, have shared program like if you're going to, to the software engineering or program you're going to study basic machinery engineering or physics or chemistry which you don't mm -hmm. need but uh, that was very overwhelming for me in the first uh, in the first and the only year of high university I went into the Russia the other mm -hmm. thing is that there is no pressure and this for me is both a blessing and a curse because um, <laughs> coming from my uh, background, uh, we basically are constantly under the pressure from teachers and their program uh, because there are a lot of deadlines, the tasks are huge and uh, teachers are constantly basically scolding you and uh, they're criticizing you if you don't do something in the deadline mm -hmm, so basically mm -hmm. which which motivates you to work but you start working under the fear of doing something not rather because you want to do something mm -hmm. um, this was completely absent in sweden uh which of course is a very great and you know, a superior way of studying if you adopt to this way um, yeah. of studying but nobody actually tells you that and uh for me personally, this led to a lot of student debts uh, in courses and studies because basically the schedule looks, uh, in my at least in university, it looks this way that basically we don't have anything at all. It seems like that because we don't have lectures, we don't have workshop, and teachers encourage you basically to do all of the assignments and works on your own. And mm -hmm. there's only one deadline that is like a three months and you feel like you don't have anything to do at all, but you actually do, and you realize <laughs> it only like, for the day and the deadline mm. so yeah um i like the way that it's taught but it is a very how to say it's very unfamiliar and it's very different uh mm. to i would say to countries like russia, china, Japan. yeah Sweden. i know we've spoken to students before who have said 
um, that the Swedish academic culture is very different to what they're used to back home and have uh, brought up a little bit of what you're saying, Ivan, that, um, you know, you have a deadline to submit an assignment, but there's uh, you don't get punished for submitting it late or you maybe fail an exam and you can retake that exam as many times as you want afterwards usually without any sort of punishment um, and it's a very good thing but it also requires a lot of self-discipline on behalf of the students and it might not be something to that they used to from back home so it can be quite challenging I think. Um, do you think it's different uh, studying in Sweden um, compared to the universities back home, Nahid? And um, I'm thinking about things like the relationship between teachers and students. Is that similar or different to what you're used to? Uh, you know, we have close relation with uh, our teachers. Uh, we have uh, they somehow. Mm, treat us as colleagues and they are mentors not teachers uh, they don't punish you and you have you are free to contact them every time you have a uh, question uh, i don't remember even one time i sent an email and it did they didn't answer me uh, i think in 98 per eight percent of uh, cases they answered me same day Mm -hmm. And they care about you. They care about your study. They care about your experience with your study. Uh, it's really the first thing that comes to my mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, uh, I think the next uh, big difference is tight connection with uh, industry uh, mm -hmm. and the experience I have uh, from that. Uh, I mean, our teacher help us uh, and they monitor us uh, in a, somehow in a weekly basis uh, as mentors and we discuss the problems and conflicts and uh, ask for solutions from them and they help us and it's really great. Mm -hmm. Also we have uh, something else, um, we have a donor organization and uh, they are an organization who uh, try to support women uh, mm -hmm. who are uh, working and studying in game industry mm -hmm. and uh, try to somehow bring gender equal equality to the industry and to study and it's really great as well for me. Mm -hmm. That's good to hear. Um, my next question is about uh, accommodation. Did you get help finding accommodation um, through the university. And can you tell me a little bit about your student accommodation now? Um, you can start Nahid. You talked about coming here with your children. So mm -hmm. um, was it hard uh, for you? Actually, I, I think I was so lucky. I, uh, mm -hmm. I just have the university and Hofde is not really big city and uh, they have two different kind of accommodation. Uh, a regular accommodation is for students who are single and they want to rent a uh, room. Mm -hmm. But for uh, families, they have a, a queue. You can register in that queue and then collect points. And, and it's right. Uh, it's look like a regular queue for accommodation mm -hmm. in Sweden, but uh, it's for students only. And mm -hmm. then uh, I was lucky I could rent uh, an apartment for myself and my family uh, and uh, I managed everything when I was in Iran uh, yep. yeah then I, when I arrived I have a, an apartment I have my keys and I had everything mm, that's good um, so just to clarify for those watching, the queue system that Nahid is talking about is quite common in Sweden when it comes to rental accommodation. Basically, you register your name in a lot of different housing queues, and then the longer you stand in the queues, the more points you accumulate. And when a place becomes available, the person with the most queue points is the first person offered that apartment or accommodation. Um, what about you, Evan? Did you get help um, getting your apartment? Uh, can you describe your accommodation there? Oh, yeah, um, I certainly did. Uh, there is a good thing, at least for the non-European Union students, is that mm -hmm. while we have yeah, a lot of money uh, for study, 
and there's no other option. The good thing is that at least the Uppsala University, they guarantee that they will find you in accommodation. It's mm -hmm. still you have to pay for it separately. It doesn't. It does not. It's not. It is not really good in the tuition fee, which has to be considered, of course. Mm -hmm. But it's still a good thing, especially in Sweden, when there is basically a demand on uh, on one on one apartment, there is average uh, 10 people in demand. Uh, considering this issue in Sweden, it is very, it is a very good thing, especially for newcomers in the country, that they 100% guarantee you to find an apartment. Mm -hmm. um, and they did for me. Uh, it was fine. Uh, the first apartment of the first year was basically some sort of a more like classical college campus thing when you have the personal private room, but um, the bathroom and the kitchen are shared, mm -hmm. but now it is basically completely. Uh, now my apartment is completely private. It's uh, it has like a small, small inbuilt uh, stove with the sink, and it has the private bathroom, and mm -hmm. there is also a storage a storage room on the on the attic of the house, and mm -hmm. the whole thing is basically. 400 euros approximately for for each month and mm -hmm. this price includes the stable uh good stable internet uh connection and, and also includes all of the regular fees like electricity uh electricity water and stuff, heating and stuff like that you don't have to pay separately for that but nonetheless uh considering the price transportation fees, you have to also consider that you have to pay for the accommodation. But you can be sure, this is your university, you can be sure that you'll be, uh, they will find you one if you mm -hmm. register in time. Okay. And um, something I'm sure a lot of the people watching are interested in is what it's been like for the two of you to study here in Sweden and live here in Sweden during the pandemic. Um, could you tell me a little bit about <laughs> what it's been like uh, to be a student here? Uh, over the last year and a half, if, Ivan? Uh, the experience for me would, would probably be different in comparison to any other student who would be asked about this question because the thing is, the game design in Uppsala University, the Faculty of Game Design in Uppsala University is located not on the mainland, it is located on Gotland. Gotland mm -hmm. is basically, uh, sorry, I forgot, basically a resort island uh, for the Swedish, uh, for the Swedish folks. Mm -hmm. And this means, well, the summer is very cool and neat here because <laughs> there's a lot of people, there's a lot of businesses, there's a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of cafes, a lot of souvenir shops, a lot of clubs and pubs. Once autumn starts, the island dies and there is nothing. And especially when the pandemic happened, not only, of course, not only just uh, international students left for the home houses because there is no reason to stay in the island. Also, the Swiss themselves they also left for the mainland where they actually live. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, when there was the first months, uh, when the first months of pandemic was the first year, all second year was basically spent in isolation. There was completely nothing to do. Uh, this was fine specifically for me because I'm a very isolated person. But I think for any other more sociable person that would probably drive them mad. But now, in the 2021, uh, we have returned to study on campus, and now you can combine a campus on-campus study with the mm -hmm. ed distant education. So now, in that in that regard, is again completely fine. There is a lot of students in the t in the city, and you can totally socialize and you can have any kind of activity you want with the other students. Uh, but yeah, that would be my mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. And Nahid, what has it been like for you living here with your family and studying during the pandemic? Uh, actually, it wasn't that much hard for me. <laughs> uh, the first half, the uh, first time, I mean, the first half of the first semester was on campus. Then everything turned on online, but uh, you mm -hmm. know, Kofte is a city that everything is about game there. Uh, it's some sort of hub for game mm -hmm. industry and we have uh, an organization called uh, Sweden Game Arna Hovde and they started to uh, somehow support us. I mean, not only the university did this, also uh, mm -hmm. the Sweden Game Arna has a uh, 
channel, I mean, Discord channel. And when you join that, they have weekly meetings or mm, monthly meeting and you can, uh, they support us somehow. They supported us and uh, it was, not that much bad for me. <laughs> I mean, I, mm -hmm. I really had time to study and mm -hmm. somehow adapt myself to Sweden as well. Also my mm -hmm. children. Uh, yeah. it, uh, so I can't complain about that. It was good. <laughs> okay, that's good to hear. And uh, have studies more or less returned to normal for you both now? Are you both back on campus and are you able to meet your classmates in person? Yes, uh, SV is normal and uh, is on campus now and we can go to university, meet our classmates, talk to teachers and we have mm -hmm. normal classes now and normal projects mm -hmm. and everything. Everything is normal again and I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah, and is that the same for you, Ivan? Yeah. <laughs> That's know, good. Really, uh, is that the same for you, Ivan? Yeah, as I mentioned, um, it is now the same, basically. On campus, uh, it is on campus, but you can also, for a lot of, for a lot of courses, you can also apply, use the Zoom as before. So it's basically a mix, but everybody who studies mm -hmm. here now are now on campus. So yeah, as before. Okay. And, okay. Uh, so you're both studying international programs, which means um, that all of the teaching is done in English. Would you agree that uh, it's easy to live in Sweden without speaking Swedish? And are you able to get by with English only? Yeah, um, I can agree. Okay. I think, um, oh, sorry. yeah, it's really... <laughs> Yeah, it's really, uh, I mean, in Sweden, everyone can speak English. So I, I won't have, uh, I don't uh, think it's a problem when you don't know uh, Swedish. Uh, you won't have any kind of problem with communication with people. Uh, even if it's uh, in your uh, children's school, it's in, uh, I don't know, grocery store or it's in hospital you can communicate with everyone and mm -hmm. also uh, all the students in sweden are way better than me at least in uh, <laughs> english skills so they can speak english very well and it's a plus point i think you don't uh, feel like i can't communicate with them they can't understand me and it's really good everyone can understand your words and you don't have any problem with that uh, sense yeah that's good and ivan are you learning swedish while you're here i'm trying to learn swedish uh, mm -hmm. there was actually there was actually a basic swedish course um, in Uppsala university but but I personally didn't handle it because it was a lecture format. There wasn't a lot of interaction with the teachers, uh, which is very difficult for me to learn that way, mm -hmm. especially because I personally don't uh, like the language and, but the motivation uh, to learn it is absent, but there is a need for that. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, what I could say about the experience with English um, and an English or Swedish language in Sweden is that if you plan to just come and study here, then there is no need to learn Swedish whatsoever. Everybody speaking, everybody speaks English. Uh, you can easily communicate with anybody at normal, almost basically native speaker level on that mm -hmm. uh, on English. But if you want to stay in the country after studying, then mm -hmm. it is, I would say. Not necessary, but it is. I highly encourage to learn the language. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think uh, it's really important to learn uh, Swedish, and I know most of university provide some sort of basic Swedish language courses. You can register in them. At least I know in uh, University of Hovde they help the students with free courses. Mm -hmm. And also there is another thing uh, called SFE, and when mm -hmm. you get your 
if you are two year master uh, two year student if you have resident permit mm -hmm. for uh, at least 13 months you can get yeah. your personal number and then mm -hmm. you can register in sfe and uh, start learning swedish language and it's necessary for if, because uh, if you want to stay here you should learn about people culture and then uh, if you want to become a part of society, it's really necessary to understand their language as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so F SFE, it stands for Swedish for Immigrants. And anyone who's coming to study in Sweden uh, for 13 months or longer, as you said, Nahid uh, is entitled to get a Swedish personal number. And that's kind of like a, a identification number that's used for all sorts of things. Um, and once you've got a Swedish personal number, you can study Swedish for immigrants for free and it's offered all over Sweden. Um, so if we're talking a little bit about your, your courses and your classmates, uh, do you have a fairly international class? Are there a lot of Swedish students in the class? And how um, has it been sort of making friends and getting to know your classmates, considering we've also had this pandemic and you've been studying via distance? Ivan? Um, in our faculty, from what I am, from what I know, is basically 50%. 50% are Swedish, uh, all uh, the other half is all international students. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I can say more than that because we yeah, have the people from Europe, there are a lot of Europe, there are people from USA, from Japan, from Middle East, from everywhere. It's just uh, the whole, international students is a whole mix. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Nahid, what does your uh, student body look like in your program? Uh, I think it's not 50-50, like 40% are international students and 60% mm -hmm. are Swedish students, uh, but international students are from different point of the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, from Middle East, China, uh, Brazil, I think, and other countries, India mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, also we have uh, a lot of girls and women who are studying in the course okay. uh, and in, in the program. Uh, also, we have some sort of some sort of friendly relation uh, uh, with other classmates. Uh, we worked closely together to, for example, to test the game or work on a project uh, or we help each other to find a solution for, uh, for example, some, uh, one academic issue or uh, we support each other somehow. And it's really good we have a supportive network of classmates and uh, we always in connection uh, via a Discord channel and it's really good. Uh, also is uh, Swedish students really help us as well to understand. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I had a lot of questions about uh, how studying in Sweden look like for a teenager in 15 years old, because my son is 15. Mm -hmm. And uh, students really, I mean, Swedish students really helped me and they provide me a lot of uh, different resources and information about that. And mm. it was really good. They somehow support international students mm -hmm. okay so um ivan you talked about living on gotland which is a very unique place because it is an island in the middle of the baltic sea and is quite far away from the swedish mainland um so now we're going into the darker colder winter months and my question to you is when you live on this little island what do you do in your spare time how do you keep yourself occupied and um what kind of things do you do, especially now when it's not good weather? As I said, I'm firstly, I'm kind of an isolated person. So for me, that was not a problem even when the pandemic happened because uh, I did study, especially since, you know, it's a programming, I'm programming oriented game design student. Uh, yeah, I do stuff behind the computer all the time. And since mm -hmm. it's also games, when I also spend the free time behind the computer, mm -hmm. but also. I just go to the gym. The only thing I basically go to the site is going to the grocery shop or going to the gym to just support, compensate for my very idle style lifestyle. And that's mm -hmm. it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I also, what... uh, so actually, the, it's for me the other way around. I enjoy uh, 
bad weather, which is good for me. I like <laughs> rain and I like when it's cloudy and there is no sun. Also. Okay. So yeah, mm. that's fine for me. And uh, Nehi, is it hard for you to cope with the Swedish weather? It must be very different to the weather in Iraq. Uh, yeah. Iran. <laughs> Iran. Yes. Uh, I, I think winter are uh, almost freezing here, <laughs> but yeah. uh, we have the snow and uh, it's not, I mean, it's different, but not that much, I think. Okay. Uh, also, if you have good clothes, you can survive. <laughs> it's yeah. not a big problem. But for darkness, I think it's not uh, really bad at all because it's a new experience. You can uh, somehow go out and see, for example, uh, decoration. Uh, many uh, municipalities try to make with lights, and uh, mm -hmm. you can enjoy uh, by walking in nature. And I don't know. I liked winter yeah mm -hmm. i mean it wasn't uh, it was dark but it wasn't bad it was really interesting okay. for me okay that's good to hear i struggle with the darkness in particular when it's um winter but uh, uh, if you <laughs> compare it with other countries is not that much dark maybe two hours per day mm -hmm. the, 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 the longest different is two hours or something mm -hmm. yeah Okay, um, so is there anything about living in Sweden which has surprised either of you or been different to what you imagined, Nahid? Mm, actually, before coming here, I started searching about many things mm -hmm. and somehow set my expectation. But the only thing I think is that, uh, you know, um, when I came here, my uh, my children wanted to go to uh, start, I mean, uh, again, uh, their school. And they mm -hmm. then they supported them with another sort of school for learning Swedish, basic Swedish, mm -hmm. uh, for two months. And then uh, I got surprised because I thought with myself, okay, we are not from Sweden, but they support children. And it's really, I mean different from maybe other parts of the world even uh, mm -hmm. they support children and it's really good option for families yeah well, that's good to hear um so i've got some more questions here we've prepared um one of them is how are your courses mostly examined i imagine uh doing game design that it's very practical and hands-on is that the case ivan uh, in my university, yes, it is the case. Uh, there, be, there are almost no any exams like I used to have in any other university. Mm -hmm. It's not the case in other faculties. Uh, my friends are studying like more general software engineering. They have they have uh, more traditional exams where you actually have to learn the theory or learn the practice and handle it in, in the proper on the proper on the proper test. Uh, but in my case, um, studies here, yeah, it is always hand in the task, hand in the project, show what you've done. Um, if you satisfy the requirements, then you're passing. There is nothing that you have to learn in the theory, which is, I mean, in my, in my opinion, it is a more good thing, at least in my, uh, in my speciality, mm -hmm. because, uh, again, pro, uh, programmers, for them, one of the major skills that they have to acquire it is how to Google things because mm -hmm. they never stop learning. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, so yeah, for me, this is how the exam is handled. Just mm -hmm. do the tasks, just yeah. do your task, do the projects, uh, which may be very some very small thing. Just again handling the papers or the form with the proper mm -hmm. answers, or making a sixty hour uh, spend sixty hours to make a, a game to fully mm -hmm. code the game by yourself. It varies, but yeah, this is how it's handled in my case. Mm -hmm. And Nahid, how practical is your program? Uh, actually, we don't have a traditional way of final exam or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, instead, in our courses are graded based on presentation, reports, discussion, projects, written assignment, and things like mm -hmm. that. And uh, then as I said before, we are from, I mean, in the University of Hope, the students uh, who are 
um, studying uh, game development are from different backgrounds. And then by this approach, uh, they could handle uh, the problem somehow. And then mm -hmm. every student is evaluated based on their previous background and their current mm -hmm. in interest. And mm -hmm. it's the way they handle uh, grading uh, and this kind of official. <laughs> mm -hmm. And how heavy is your course load? Do you have um, fairly standard like school hours where you sit and study or do you have to do a lot of work in the evenings and on the on the weekends? Do you have time to do things outside of school or is it very are you very busy with your studies? Nahid? I would say it, it's de it depends on you and how you want to uh, manage your time somehow. But if you want to get good grade, like A and B, uh, you should work hard. But it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that uh, you don't have to, uh, you don't have time to enjoy yourself. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. you can manage your time uh, because it's not a traditional way of uh, studying. Mm -hmm. you have time to work on project learn uh, things like i don't know like unity unreal programming 3d art and anything you are interested in so you can enjoy that part uh, mm -hmm. course structure is like we have r d course and then we have project course then you can combine them together somehow and work uh, somehow you can manage your time and have time to enjoy uh, mm -hmm. so you know, as well. <laughs> yeah. well, that's good to hear. Um, so what are your plans for the future, uh, both of you? If you're an international student in Sweden, you have the option to extend your residence permit after you've graduated to stay in Sweden and look for work. And if you are successful in finding a job, then you can stay in Sweden. Uh, is that something that either of you are planning on doing or what do you want to do after? Uh, Ivan? Yeah, uh, this is basically my plan. Um, yeah. 20 years old, uh, there is no game industry in Russia, at least the, the prospect one, every, if you want to actually achieve some more personal goals, like going to the like, big studio and making a game of your dream. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, the, the plan for me, at least, is basically uh, finish studying, uh, mm -hmm. try to find a job in a year after the university is finished, uh, yeah, get a working visa, and mm -hmm. then uh, basically work in Sweden until uh, I uh, until I get a citizenship. Citizenship. Yeah. And then yeah, uh, then it's a long story because it will take a lot of time to get a citizenship anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And what about you, Nahid? Uh, my first option, if it's possible, uh, I would continue my study in PhD level. Uh, mm -hmm. But unfortunately, the number of PhD position for uh, game study is limited. And yeah. if I can't manage that, the second option for me or plan B is to find a job in game industry if it's possible. Mm -hmm. But you know, people who like game development always think about developing their own game as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, if I have a chance and I can convince incubator in Huff, then maybe and team up with people also, maybe I can make my indie game company as well. Mm -hmm. So these are my thoughts for now. Yeah. Well, good luck with that, both of you. So we're wrapping up our webinar now. It's been super interesting talking to the two of you. Um, and I'd like to ask you what word, word advice do you have to any international students who are currently considering applying to your programs and coming to Sweden to study? And Nahid, you can continue. Um, I think if your heart beat for game development and producing a game, mm -hmm. definitely apply for game uh, programs in Sweden, especially my university. <laughs> but it's only uh, for, I mean, for international students, they have only master for international, and not, they don't have bachelor for mm -hmm. international students. Uh, but uh, first of all, you should, uh, first of uh, all, you should, somehow prepare yourself, try to learn Unity, Unreal, or any kind of uh, engine you are interested in. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, because you need 
a portfolio if you want to uh, to find a job in in industry. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, I'm sure in uh, for University of Hofde we have some events. If you have any question, you cannot um, somehow apply and uh, that events and. Uh, for example, I'm sure at uh, at 18th of November they have some sort of event for game development, and then mm -hmm. you can go and uh, apply for that event and uh, join the, via Zoom, I think, and yeah. talk to teachers, the students, and gain more knowledge about that before okay. any decision. Try to find facts and information. It's mm -hmm. really important. Okay, well, thank you for that. Um, and Ivan, do you have any advice? Do you recommend your program? And what would you say to those who are considering applying? Yeah, I guess there. Um, yeah, I guess there are three points I'd probably like to mention. Uh, the first thing is more regarding our university and our faculty. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is that I'm not. I don't think this particular mentioned in the university in the course description is that. All of the courses, all of the programs, they they do not use, they do not expect you to have any prior knowledge uh, to the to the field that you are mm -hmm. going in. So, for instance, if you like if you'd like to become an artist uh, in the game industry, but you feel uncomfortable about that because you don't have any prior skill in arts or you don't have the you haven't studied in the art school, then you shouldn't probably worry because like in the programming, for instance we've been on the first lecture we've been told how to how to install visual studio on our computer mm -hmm. uh they do not expect you to have any any knowledge at all uh that said for of course if you have any prior knowledge that will give you a good head start and a good advantage because you'll have an easy time on the first uh on the first term or the first two terms uh basically skipping through the study parts and being able to spend that more time on actually adapting to the new uh to the new environment to the new country and handling all of the busy work with the papers and making the pushun number and making the bank account and so on and so on mm -hmm. uh, that is the first thing the second thing um it's again you have to remember if you're applying to the Uppsala university and game design faculty it mm -hmm. is not Uppsala. it is not really it is not close to stockholm it yeah. is important mm -hmm. uh, and you have to consider that when you make a decision because if you're actually an extrovert person or if you're a very act socially active person yeah. this might become difficult a lot of people even a lot of students even thought of a name as uh, so to speak they call it the winter depression uh, in yeah i never handled that but that's me uh, and i mentioned that i'm an introvert basically very yeah much. Uh, you're very little in that regard. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the second thing. The third thing, it is a more general, uh, it's not related to Sweden. It is more related to people who would like to apply for and study for game design, go into the game development and study programming. If you don't have, uh, if you don't have enough passion, if you don't consider your games, video games, your passion, uh, if you just think that it's something good that you might try or it's something good to you because, you know, you make games, games are fun and stuff, don't even try. Don't even try to go there, you'll hurt yourself because uh, this is one of the most horrific uh, industry to work in. Unless you have personal passions to work there, you will not benefit in any way. You will have more, start, you will have more success studying anything else, especially programming. Programming games is the most it's the most difficult kind of software to program at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that said, you can go in any other software engineering industries or maybe app development or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, web development, because again, it is basically the majority of the time and effort you will spend here will be related to passion, not money. You can earn money, but the amount of effort you will spend that to earn that money will be much lesser in any other industry yeah uh yeah okay and well, i think that's basically yeah that's really good advice thank you um okay we haven't gotten into many questions here today that 
the audience has submitted, but uh, we will be going through the questions that have been written on Facebook and YouTube afterwards and answering what we can there. Uh, for those who are looking for more information, if you look at our website, studyinsweden.se, you will find everything you need to know to consider moving to Sweden and submit an application. You'll be able to read about the programs that both Ivan and Nahid are currently enrolled in. Um, so I'd like to thank you both for joining us today. It's been really great talking to you. And thank you very much to everybody who has watched. Uh, keep an update on our website because we will be holding more of these webinars in the coming weeks about different topics. Okay, thank you very much and later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.